Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Automated AP Without the Agro. My name is Darshni Shah. I'm the product manager here with K3 Cispro, and I'm very happy to have two of our partners join us today. We've got Anthony Dickinson and Jay Clapham joining us from Anota. They're part of the DocuWare team, and the Anota team, they're a DocuWare reseller, and we've been working with them for quite a few years. Hello, both. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. So today's webinar is actually going to be done both by Anthony and Jade. Anthony is the managing director for Anota. He's an enthusiast for all things around business digitalization, helping businesses perform better. Don't hold it against him. He's an avid Liverpool fan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jade's the operations manager at Anoto. She oversees the professional services delivery team and is the dedicated point of contact for everything associated with the projects all the way through to go live. She holds your hand all the way along the project through to completion. She's the CISPRO specialist at Anoto. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Anthony to get a better sense of their VertiSuite product today. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we're going to go cameras off um, and then cameras back on at the end for the Q&A just to set the scene. So let me turn that off. Thank you, thank you, Darshni. Um, so let's uh, let's get let's get going on this. So um, so yeah, thanks very much for uh, for joining the webinar. I'm going to talk to you um, about uh, AP automation for Cispro. Um, and that works with a number of products, DocuAir being the main DMS element of that, and then Verso Switch, which sits between the two uh, programs and, uh, and basically allows you to post data directly into Cispro. Um, so just a bit of scene setting, really. So who are we? So I'm, as Daishni said, I'm Managing Director for Anota. Um, Anota was founded in 2011. We're based in, in Hull. Um, we primarily work with UK clients, although we have got some um, in America um, and Ireland. So we're, we're kind of scaling out and uh, looking at the South African market at the moment as well. So founded in 2011, which we started with two people and we're now built ourselves up to 12 staff within the business. Um, seven strong technical support team. Um, and we're also backed up by the DocuA partner uh, channel for support as well so you actually you know get a best of breed in terms of support that you get from both the nose of his first line and then uh anything you know that's uh, really heavily technical we we bring DocuAir in to help with that as well um over the last four years we've um, brought in four developers to help us put together what you're about to see um and jade heads up um as operations manager heads up the project management side an ongoing account management side uh, along with her team. So we're experienced with a wide range of ERPs. Specifically today, we're gonna to talk about CISPRO. Um, and we are, I would like to say, referred to as the number one DocuAir integration partner in the UK. Um, and more importantly, we've been working very, very closely with K3 since uh, 2018. And you may well have seen us at uh, their customer events. Um, and for the last two sessions, I know we had a two-year outage for the dreaded uh, COVID, um, but we were headline sponsor alongside DocuAir for that. Um, and that's just a sample of some of the clients. Some of those clients are uh, specifically K3 clients, and actually K3 are one of our customers. So K3 themselves use the software that we're going to show you today for importing invoices into their back office Cispro system. Um, I'll just pick a couple out of there. So Eddie Stobart are using the technology and DocuAir that we're about to show you, and they're actually processing 10,500 PODs a day through DocuAir, and also 10,000 invoices per month through DocuAir as well. So it really does, um, it shows you the scalability of the system. And, um, you know, we also have some clients lower down, uh, in like Drive to Vilbis uh, are another um Joint, joint customer of ours and they're processing about a thousand invoices a month so it doesn't really matter on the volume but the process and the problems and the solutions that we provide are very similar right the way through that 
Um, and we've been working with DocuWare for 11 years since our inception, and we're a platinum partner um, again this year. So who are DocuWare? Let me just give you a little bit of background on who DocuWare are. So DocuWare were founded in 1988, believe it or not. Um, and that business, when it started, when it started, just purely focused on document management. Um, so document management has really um, come to the fore now. And I think primarily the, um, the COVID um, has, has really brought that to the fore in terms of hybrid working, people needing to get access to documents, information when they possibly working at home. So all those all those bits of paper that are tied up in files in filing cabinets in the office are absolutely no good. Um, so DocuWare really has taken off over the last couple of years specifically. Um, and in 2021 turned over 85 million. They have offices um, all over the world, um, US, Germany, UK, France, Spain, to name but a few, and 17,000 customers worldwide. And there's a couple of big household name brands there um, that I'm sure everybody is well aware of. Um, and these are global customers that are using DocuWare um, across all of their operations across the world. Um, the solution, you, you have choices in the solution. So um, on-premise on is still um, available, but I would say over the last four or five years, 95, 97% of clients are going, are adopting cloud technology, and that is um, hosted in Azure. So specifically for EU, it's in Ireland and mirrored across the Netherlands, and it's web browser based. So that's, you know, what does that mean to you? It means it doesn't matter what device you use, you can access DocuWare through it. And there's also um, a mobile application for iOS and Android as well. Um, and the beauty of the cloud is that all the modules are instantly available. Um, so the workflow modules, digital forms, connectors to Mail and Outlook, um, and all the desktop apps and funky things that they do are all immediately available to you. And I think the beauty of the cloud is um, over on-premise is all your upgrades and all your maintenance and everything is actually included within your annual license. So it makes it very simple. Um, and it also takes the pain around upgrading systems. So upgrading on-premise can be lengthy um, and can lead to some downtime as well. Um, but with the cloud, that's all taken care for, care for, care of for you. So I, what, are, what are the benefits of DocuWare Cloud? I would say usability. I think some of the points are touched on then, you know, browser interface, the user interface is really clean. So there's an example on the right hand side there and you'll see in the demonstration we're gonna, we're gonna give you what DocuWare looks like. It's a really nice, clean and simple and easy to use interface, even down to when you wanna run a search. If you can use Google, you can use DocuWare. It's very, very simple. Um, and I will also say the availability. So, uh, as I said, it's hosted in the Microsoft Azure, which is absolutely exceptional in terms of performance. So, fantastic. Now, DocuWare, I would, I would say they, they base themselves around the, the four main pillars of, of principles that they work around are reliability, availability, security, and most importantly, auditability. So, it's built in a very robust and stable infrastructure in Azure's cloud. Um, in terms of availability, 99.9% .9 uptime, which is quite amazing in this day, but obviously it's important, it's always up. Getting into security, so some things that are available uh, are standard, are single sign-on and two-factor authentication, um, and obviously all the SSL certificates that you would associate with the product and its API as well. And I think in this day and age, it's important that you, should you need to prove it, that you can actually, uh, at the click of a button, find out who's viewed a document, who's edited it, who's printed it, who's emailed it out of the business. Every touch point regarding to a document is fully recorded in the back end, um, which auditors absolutely love, absolutely love. So I just wanted to put up um, some of the ISO certs. Um, that are as standard, so ISO 9001 and 27001, I'm sure you will have all heard of. Um, SOC 1, SOC 2, HIPAA, everything that you can conceivably think about um, that is applicable in 
UK, UK, EU is all there. It's GDR, GDPR compliance as well. And then you've also got some endorsements by federations um, specific to the uh, Americas, Germany, Spain. So all taken care of. And, and just to explain how that hangs together, so this is quite an, an interesting diagram, really. So it may be that uh, this is really explaining what. So if your data at the top of the page, which is the top of the iceberg above above the ice, um, you'd be working with 10 giga, gigabytes worth of data. But actually below the surface is where all the clever stuff happens that actually you don't get involved in. So there are actually at any one point in time six copies of your document mirrored across all the DocuS servers. So if anything happens to one of the servers, there are another five ready to pop straight back up. So in essence, you're never going to lose any information. And all the backups are taken care of as well. Where do we find DocuAir use? Well, DocuAir doesn't really speci specifically put my teeth in focus in any particular vertical market. Um, it can go across any um, any business. As I said at the start, businesses, no matter where they are, have similar issues or similar traits within them, within them in terms of paper usage, storage, what workflows look like. So um, as you've seen, we've got examples in transport and logistics. Um, aviate, we have clients in aviation, engineering, construction. Medical is a really um, hot topic at the moment. Um, and auto, auto, auto trade as well. So um, it really does go right the way through that. And I would say particular hot areas for document usage are in accounts payable, which we're going to talk to you about um, shortly, but also in HR as well. So Darshni mentioned Verto Suite at the at the start. So Verto Suite is basically a product that sits between DocuAir's API, between DocuAir and Cisco. Now, Verto Suite in the Cisco language is, is, uh, is like data switch, but on steroids. So it was doing that data manipulation and validation in the middle to make it meaningful when it passes from DocuAir into Cisco. Um, and we have configured this in conjunction with K3 at the very start so that it is liaising between the APIs. Now, the reason we do it that way is um, going in through the data going in through the API into Cisco, it will ad adhere to the business logic that Cisco requires. Um, and, you know, that keeps it really clean. So at the start of the process, invoices will, I would say, primarily come in by email now. Um, so I think the pandemic has led to paper being removed pretty much from the process. So the days of invoices coming in by, via post seem to have gone, which is great um, because it's easier to handle and capture from an email. So in this example, an, atta an attachment to an email. So what DocuAir does um, is it monitors that email box and it brings the invoices in um, directly into DocuAir, which you'll see in the demonstration in a bit. Um, if they do come in paper, we can scan them in. It then goes into DocuAir and it is stored away. Um, and then from that point, we then start our interaction and our validations going back out into your Cisco system. Um, and Virto picks up the invoice, runs all the specified line item checks. Um, and if there is an error during those checks, it will pass it back to DocuAir uh, into a task list, which then people can, anyone in the business can investigate um, and resolve. If it passes all its checks, um, the invoice is then posted directly into the ERP system. Um, now I'm going to um, just fire up a quick video now. So Peter, who's uh, one of our senior developers, I'd asked him to put a video together. So you're going to see DocuAir, you're going to see invoices going into DocuAir, and ultimately you're going to see data being posted into Cispro or within this demonstration. So I'm just going to click the next screen um, and I'll be back to you shortly. Hello everybody, it's Peter here from Anota and I'm here today to show you through our Virto accounts payable process demo. 
So today I'm going to be showing you through the integration we have between our DocuWare system and our Syspro system. Now, DocuWare is our DMS that we're using and Syspro is our ERP that our account side use. Now, we do support multiple different ERPs. It's just Syspro happens to be the demo system I have here today for you. So to begin with, I'm going to show you inside my Syspro quickly to show you that it is all completely empty. So I'm going to run a very quick supplier query on my two suppliers, which is 1027 and 1028. So my company Slate Harrison, and I have no invoices at the bottom here. And my second customer I'm going to show you today is Pottery Crafts, and I've got no invoices at the bottom here. So this is a completely empty test environment, just so I can show you through how the process is going to go. Step across to the other side, I have my DocQS system here, and I'll quickly talk you through all the different things you're going to find as we come into the system. Now, I've logged in an approver here, so I can show you that later. And I have my accounts payable member here with a couple of documents I've already stored just to kind of speed the process along a little bit. So to log into the DocUS system, you have a username and password that you are provided for each user. And you enter them and it'll take you into this main page. Now, the main page is divided up into seven parts. On the right hand side, you've got your document previewer. So if I quickly double click on document here, it will show you my document on the right. So this is my invoice that I would be receiving, usually in paper or email format. And on the left, we have all of the DocuWare control side of things. So across the top here, we have document trays, which are where we can manipulate and change the documents we have before we push them into the system, where we'll do most of our indexing. I have the search option at the top here, which will allow me to search inside the file cabinet based on different index fields, as you can see down the left here, of all the data that we capture and how I can search against it all. So if I run a quick empty search here to show you what's inside my system, you'll see I've got no documents stored. Again, it's a blank system ready for this demo. Finally, I've got three lists. I have an awaiting checks list, a posting list, which is empty, and a missing supplier list. Now, I'm not going to show you any of the missing suppliers today, but if there is a new supplier that we've got an invoice for that hasn't yet been registered on our SysPro, documents will show up here so that you can see where they are and you can see that that is updated as it's going forward. And finally, we have tasks, which will show you all of the tasks I have outstanding against my user as it come, we step through the demo. So to begin with, once you've logged into a system, you need to get documents into your DocuWare system. Now, you can do this through a number of different methods. We have import locations where we'll monitor a folder on your network. You scan it to the folder and it will pull it into the system. We can monitor mailboxes, pull in directly from email, or you can just drag and drop your documents straight on top. Once a document's inside the system, it will appear inside your tray here like these. And if I click on a different one, it will allow me to look at a second invoice. I click, let me go back to my first. And you can move them between your different trays to the different functionality by simply clicking and dragging. If you have multiple documents you wish to staple together, you can hold control and click on multiples and use the clip to turn them into a multi-page document. So this is now a two-page document. I can tag through at the top here. And if you push in a large document that has multiple invoices inside of it you want to separate out, you can do that by using the right-click unclip method and that will allow you to separate out the documents into different constituent parts. So to start off the process, with Verto, we have two different routes that you can send your documents down. We can send you through a fully automatic process and a semi-automatic process, or automatic and manual, as we refer to them. Now, the automatic process, the last thing you do is in this set of screens. You index a document, and that's it. You don't need to do anything more with it unless there's a problem, in which case it will automatically move over to the manual side so you can amend it, adjust it, send it out for approval and carry it forward. On the manual side, it does exactly the same checks and processes as the automatic side. However, it hands the document back to the accounts team for checking before it pushes forward. It allows you to send it out for, to authorize the users for approval. And finally, it brings it back to the accounts team again before it's eventually posted into the ERP system. So you've always got hands on the, the document all the way through the process. Now, the reason we split it out in this way is because some people find that a fully automatic account system is quite scary. And it is, really, for a lot of us who have been used to the paper world, the idea of just pushing your invoice into a scanner and it being paid is can be quite scary, actually, because you don't know if it's correct, you don't know if it's right. If there's something wrong and it's just gone through, you're never going to know about that. Well, this here is to reassure you that you will know, and we're going to show you how. So the manual side allows you to have that middle step between fully automatic integration and the old manual process that you used to use in the offices. 
So to show you through the automatic first, because it's incredibly quick and easy, I'm going to click and drag one over into my automatic tray here. And this is an intelligent indexing tray where this document is currently being intelligently indexed by the DocUS service so that all the data is going to be pulled off of the document. As you can see, it's a green ribbon on the top here. Now, the ribbons come in three colors, red, yellow, and green. Red is not very confident at all about what's on the document, or I've never seen this before. Yellow is, I'm pretty certain what's on this document, but I'd like you to check it anyway. And green is, I'm 95, 98% certain I know what's on this document. Can you okay it? And we'll push this through. In this case, it's green because this has been trained in our system already. So I'm going to drag this across to my automatic dialog here so I can store it in the system and it'll come up with all the data it's managed to find on the document and it will show you where on the document as well, which is really handy. So the first thing to note is this is a purchase invoice. The invoice date has been pulled off of the document. As you can see here, it's been highlighted in yellow and the 30th of the 1st, 2019 matches up. My purchase order number is under my order number. My invoice shows under my invoice number. Supplier name is taken off of the top. The net is from the net column, VAT from VAT, gross from gross. My tax code is 20%. I've got a 20% tax code. It's in GBP, which it's in GBP. And at the line level, it's pulled out the one line in the table. So I've got my stock code. I've got my description. My quantity is 72, 72. Price each is 13 pounds 20, 13 pounds 20. And my price total is 9540, 9540. Now, you may notice there are four decimal places and the invoice only has two. It's OK. It just adds in the actual decimal places required by your specific ERP system. In this case, CISPRO requires four decimal places at a line level, whereas some, such as NetSuite, only require two or can, in some cases, require as many as 13 decimal places. It's fully configurable based on the system it's going into. So I don't have any EC acquisition on this document and I'm not worried about GL analysis or PPV, so I'm just going to leave those empty. Now, it is worth noting at this stage that we can process more than just a straight standard invoice. I can code a tax code to a line. I can do GL codes at a line level. I can do a different purchase order number. So if I've got three lines, one's on a different PO, I can put that PO against that line and it will process them out. I can flag any errors at a specific line level as we get around in the process. I can specify if that line requires GL analysis, that line has a specific PPV GL, if the SKU module is installed, I can match your stock code versus a supplier's stock code, so you don't have to correct them. It will pull back which line on the purchase order it is, and I can even specify which delivery note number I wanted to pair against. It could be a four-point match instead of just a standard three. In this case, however, I'm not going to change any of that. I'm just going to process it through as a normal straight advice and let it process. So I'm just going to hit store, and that's now gone into the system. Now I'll move over into my lists. Now, in my list here, I have the awaiting IC list, which is where Virtu is running its checks. So at this stage, it's already gone through a duplicate check. It's already gone through a supplier number code check. So I know the supplier number is against the document. It's go now awaiting to go through checks like, is it does it match against purchase order? Does the total fall inside the purchase order amount? Is there a GRN for these lines? Is the line individual values, price each, price total, or within what I'm expecting to see on my GRN. Are they partial matches? Are they full matches? Assuming they're all within tolerances that have been set and that they all match up, it will move across to the posting list. This posting list will then say, OK, as soon as Virtu is ready to run on it, it will pick this document up, package it together, and push it into CISPRO. And that quickly, I can come back into my supplier query I can search for my supplier 1027 and at the bottom you'll see an invoice all posted in nice and quickly it's there that's it it's finished if i want to quickly check my invoice i can go on my query invoice it'll show me here everything is good there i can even check my gls and you'll be able to see that it has split the gls correctly into my suspense manufacturing gl and it's applied the notation of my wdoc id or my individual unique number now the notations we can set to anything uh, same as the invoice reference for the specific invoice, uh, but for here it is just my document number. So that document has been posted. It's that quick and that easy. So let's go back then and look at the manual process because this way I can kind of break it down as to what's actually happened a little bit more in the background. So here I'm going to post a Potty Crafts invoice this time, and I'm going to drag it across into my IIVerto, my manual tray. 
This is also going to run intelligent indexing, so the process is exactly the same. And when I drag this into my store dialog, exactly the same as the automatic, and I'm going to check the values. Invoice date, matches, PO number, invoice number, supplier name, net, fat, gross. My GL code has been set, my tax code is set, stock code is pulled out of the table, description has, quantity has, price each has, and price total. So currency is GBP, and everything else is already set. So I can see already that all the data is pulled off, my trading is successful, and I can just hit store and this will go into the system. So I hit store, and it's now going to run through the exact same checks as the automatic. It's going to run through the duplicate. It's going to run through the supplier code backfill, all the price each, the price total, the GRN validations, etc. And once it's run through the system and my awaiting IC clears down, I will have a task come back to me as a member of the accounts team saying, I've got this document and I need you to process it. And this is the point of every demo where I sit there thinking, come on, just a little bit quicker. And my task is in. So if I double click on my task, it will show me my document on the right so I can see what I'm looking at, and it will give me my options on the left. Now, what are the tasks that an accounts member usually has when they get a new invoice come in? Well, usually they need to send it out for an approval. So if I've got something and it needs authorizing, I need to pick an authorizer and send it out to them. So you've got the option assigned to where you can pick an authorizer, approval one. And a note section to say why I need this approving or if there's anything you need to pass along to them. Sometimes your accounts team can post directly. For example, if it's a regular electricity bill that they're allowed to authorize themselves, in which case we've got the post invoice option where you could just fill the notes in against it and hit go and it'll send it through to CISPRO. Sometimes you'll find that there's a mistake on the document. And if you need to change it and send it back to Verto to be rechecked, uh, for example, if there is a typo or your supplier comes to and says, can you add this onto it, etc., you can amend the document and then send it back around for checking. Now, it's not a feature that's used very frequently, but it is something we have seen. Finally, we also have the options of archive and delete. Archiving documents allows you to put them in the system and say, I want to keep this document, but I don't want to do anything with it. Now, this is usually used in cases of things like duplicates, where you want to keep the duplicate copy because it might be better to view, or it might be something like a proof of invoice receipt, but not an actual invoice itself. So you don't want to process it, you just want to keep it. And finally, delete is for when you have a document that's in there that you don't want in the system. For example, if they send you a duplicate invoice and it's completely unreadable, you just want to delete the bad copy and keep the good one. That's what delete is for. Note, however, this is the only point in the system where you will be able to delete documents because once you've sent the document out for approval, it's got an audit trail against it and it's required to be kept for accountability. So at this point where it's new, you can, but after that, you can't. For the demo, I'm gonna send this out for approval because if I just hit post, it'll be a very short description of how this works. So I'm gonna send this out to my approval one I logged in earlier, and that is going to leave my accounts team's task list and head straight across to the approver. And here's the approver that I logged in earlier, and you'll see the task has just appeared for my approver saying I've got work I need to do. So my approver will log in. It could be on their phone, it could be on their desktop, however they want to access it, and they will look at their tasks. And in our workflow nine for approvers, approvers have four choices. Approvers can accept, I approve this document. They can decline, I don't approve this document. They can reassign it. Ah, you send it to me and it actually needs to go to Bill because he deals with all the IT equipment. So they can send it to someone else or they can place it in query. Now, in query is really important because the number of times we found accounts teams who have sent a document to an approver to be approved and it sits with the approver. And the approver may be chasing something up with a supplier, but the accounts team just don't know. And they have to go back to the approver every day saying, where's my document? Where's my document? Where's my document? This way, the approver can say, I'm querying about the foil, what size is it? And they can type that into the notes, hit confirm, and the task will stay with the approver, but the accounts team will be able to see that on the document. And what I mean by they will see it is on the document here, there are stamps placed on every time you take a decision. So in this case, you can say the accounts team AP1 at this time and date have sent the document for approval, they've sent it to Verter Approval 1 with a note of please approve. So checking what size the foil is. 
If I hit confirm, that will send the task into my query. It will leave my task briefly. It will then come back into a task for my approver because my approver is still working on this task. But the accounts team will now be able to see it. So if I go back to my accounts team while that's looping around and I run a search within our system, so I'm just going to run a blank search again, you can see the two documents that I've stored. You'll notice the status here is in query because it, the document is in query. If I double click it, you can see here checking what size the file is. So the accounts team know and they can track the documents through the system at every step. Then back to the approver. Once they've resolved the query, if they had any, or they've decided what they want to do with it, they can choose the, either the approved or decline option. In this case, I'm going to take approve because if I pick decline, again, it'll be a very short demo. This looks good. Now, the nodes are completely optional on approved, but on decline, the reason for declination is mandatory. We don't want them sending it back to the council and saying, no, I declined this. And the council team be like, hey, so why? I have to pick up the phone anyway. So you have to want to decline, but you don't on an approval. You hit confirm, and that will take it out of the approver, straight back to the accounts team. And that's the end of the approver's entire interaction, really. They log in, they check it, they approve or decline, and they log out. Back in the accounts team, however, the task has now come back to us, and it's on status of approved. So we can see that it has been approved. I can see my big green stamp in the top corner here saying approved. This looks good, so I'm quite happy with that. And now I have a couple of different options that as an accounts member I can pick. I can send it for approval again. Now, this is useful if a document has been declined, but the reason for them declining it is bad, wrong, incorrect, or it can be sent out again. Uh, for example, um, this isn't my supplier, decline. So, okay, that's fine. It's, the, it's a bad reason for declining it because there's nothing wrong with it. It just needs to go to somebody else. They should have reassigned it, but they've, they've declined it, so you can send it back out to someone else. Another use of this will be dual authorizations, where you can then send it out to someone and say, OK, so approver one has approved it. I now need approver two to approve it, and then I can post this. You have the option to post to the ERP, so this will send it through to CISPRO. We also have modules that will allow it to be exported as CSV or an XML for integration into other ERPs, such as Sage 50. We can resend it back to Verto at the very beginning of the process. Now, this is only really useful in a very narrow set of situations such as where it's gone through the accounts team the first time and something has been missed. The approver has picked up on it and said, this needs checking. You need to send it back through to get it validated. For example, if there is a typo and quantity was 5.0, which the approver noticed, then they could send it back and say, you need to recheck this. And then you could change it and send it back through as 50 because the document clearly says 50. And you've got the option to archive it. Notice there is no delete option here because it's gone through part of the process. So you've now got an audit trail against it. So in here, I'm going to choose post to ERP. So approved and valid. In fact, I'm going to leave the typo in just so I can show you. I hit go, I check my lists, go to my posting list, and you can see it's now going into CISPRO. If I view the document, you can see here approved and valid with my typo. So the stamps are being generated and placed on as I'm going. And as soon as it's left this posting list, it will be present within CISPRO. Now, our usual turnaround time for the Verto wrapper is about five minutes, uh, although this does vary based on ERP. Um, we can go as long as every 24 hours, if you wish, or we can go up in increments of one second the five minute mark. So you can really tailor when each module runs and how it works. If you need checks to be run more frequently than posts, for example, you can have checks running every five minutes and posts running hourly, or whichever combination or build you wish it to have. If I check inside my CISPRO now, I can check 1028, and you'll see here my invoice has come in and everything is good. If I step back into DocuWare, some of you might be wondering what happens if something goes wrong. Now, it's a fact of life that something always happens somewhere down the process. Nothing is perfect and you can get situations where you're invoiced the incorrect values or there's something misordered or something hasn't been GRN'd correctly. It happens. So what we have is we have examples of this. So in here, I have a document which has a problem inside it. Now, I know this is quantity too high because it's one of my test documents, but if I push this across into the automatic process, so this is the process where 
the accounts team never see the document once it's posted. I can drag this across into my dialog and I can now start trading this document. Now, this is one I've actually not trained specifically so I can show how quickly the trading is for the line item data, because it's one thing to say, look, here's what I've trained, but in order to be able to show you how quick it picks up, this one is one I have blank. So invoice date, where is the invoice date on here? It's right there, done. PO number, what is our order number? That's our order number. Invoice number, select our invoice number. Supplier name, select our supplier name. Net, net, VAT, gross. GL code is set, tax code is set, currency is set, table. Transfer table, and as you can see here, it's tried picking up my table. Now it's not picked up completely correctly, so I can move that column over there. My quantity, I can move this column over here. Quantity is not picking up, so I'll just index that one quickly manually. So quantity eight, quantity eight, and you only have to train a document a couple of times. It'll be between one and five times to train a document to learn its layout. As you can see here, the price each is picked up as five correctly, and the price total is picked up as 40 correctly. So that's how quick I've trained that system into learning this document. And now the next time I store this document, it will know where to look for all of this data and it will pick it up and process it. But for now, I'm going to store this in so I can show you how it comes back when we have an error. So I'm going to store that in. Now, the astute of you may have noticed there is a mistake in the supplier name because here I've indexed it as pottery C space rafts. That's going to come back as an error. And on the document itself, you'll notice that I have a quantity of 10, a list price of five, and a total of 40 pounds. Now, obviously, that's going to come back as a problem. So what do I do? I wait, and we'll see how it comes back. The best part about doing these demos is knowing that even if I'm waiting here for a minute for this to be browned, in a real life account situation, you'd never be waiting around. You'd actually be processing the rest of the documents back in the document tray. So all of these remaining files will be ones that you'd be storing while all these checks are going on in the background. So the delay that you see between me hitting store and it coming back in the list isn't something an actual accounts team would notice, which as someone working with software makes me really happy to see that it's that sort of smooth transition. So here it come, it's come back, it's told me I've got an error, it's corrected the supply name for me, and it's told me that I have an error on a line, line item. So if I hit my recent Verto option and I take a look at the lines, it should tell me exactly which line has a problem. If I scroll across here, quantity too high and no GRN match found. So this is telling me, I shrink these down so you can see the full line detail, that it's saying on this particular line, the quantity is so high that no GRN matches what I'm expecting to see. So here I've got a quantity of 10. Now, obviously, I know that that's the particular issue because 10 times 5 is 50, not 40. But this shows me exactly where my problem is. So here I now have the option of how I want to address this. I can amend the data and say that this is actually an eight. Um, and then I can make a note on the document stating I've done that. So if I put a text note on here, it'd be eight. Confirm with supplier. That's now written on the document. I can save that annotation and I can send this back around to Verto. Or I can delete it and say, I'm getting a new copy off of the supplier. I don't want to process this version because it's incorrect. I can assign it for investigation. If I need to send it to someone to say, I don't know what's wrong with this, or this isn't my document, etc. Can you take a look? I can pick someone, give it to them, and they can go and do the investigation for me. Or as a last resort, we always have the process manual option at this stage, which is as an accounts team, I'm not going to process it through Verto. I'm just going to enter it into CISPRO myself directly. Now, this is here because some documents have errors that are so, so complicated, they have to be done manually. Um, for example, if you've got 30 different lines with 30 different unit types, instead of being each, you've got shelves of three, packs of four, 
you've got 20 of the same stock code that have different unit prices, different quantities and different values, et cetera, et cetera. It's the very fringe situations that this is for, but it's an option in case the accounts team require it. More often than not, we find that what they will put on the quantity should be, confirm it with the supplier, get the approval to do so, amend it, and then send it back to Perto. In this case, I've amended it, sent it back, sent it through to the list, and as soon as Verto picks this document up again, it will run all of the validation checks again and then send it back to me with the new result. If there's something else that's wrong with it, it will come back with a new problem. If there isn't, it will push it forward through to the accounts team for actioning and authorizing. And that's pretty much the end of my demo for today. So I hope you like what you've seen and you found it all very interesting. And hopefully we'll hear from you soon. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Um, so I just wanted to um, pass back over um, some of the benefits as we see them. So um, really, it's a, just a short list here, but I, I could go on forever and a day, but I'm conscious of time. Um, but in terms of invoices coming in, you've got a real time registration of those invoices. Um, entering the business. So it's not as though it sits on someone's desk for three, four, five days um, and gets forgotten about. So, you know, why is that important? Well, you've got a real time accrual if it's getting towards end of month. Um, invoices are stored electronically and, and moved around the business in that way as well. You'll find a, a, a massive reduction in your printing and your, obviously your paper storage because it's all going up into the cloud. Um, and I think very uh, hot topic at the moment. I know the word uh, hybrid working probably gets overused and we're fed up of hearing about it, but it's a reality of the world that we live in now. So you've got a completely web-based process. And as we said earlier on, um, it doesn't matter what device you want to interact with. Um, you, know, you could be sat on the train approving your invoices if that's what you choose to do. Um, we're also automatically matching the invoices to not only the PO, but more importantly, the goods received notes or GRN, as we refer to it. Because um, why would you want to pay an invoice based on a PO? You would want to know that the goods have actually arrived. Um, and it will automatically close down the, the GRN within CISPRO once it's fully matched also. And we've got partial matching and all those all those things for, uh, for partial deliveries. Um, Intelligent indexing is a real, and, and this is all built in within the uh, DocuA cloud. Um, and for reference, that is unlimited. So it doesn't matter whether you process 500 or 10,000, it's exactly the same price. It really doesn't matter to us. Um, and it saves a huge amount of time. So as I said, we're three-way matching on the invoice PO and GRN, um, and also working through PPV, purchase price variants, which we are seeing a lot um, coming through in that way. So an example might be you place an order in February, but your goods don't arrive until uh, April, May. Um, but actually there's been a price increase by, by the time they actually land with you. So we're seeing a lot of purchase price variants um, within our systems now. You have the option to um, put in tolerance checks at a line level and a header level, and those could be percentages or value or a combination of the two because um, 1% of a million pounds is a lot of money and you wouldn't want that passing through automatically. Um, and multiple currencies as well. Um, and those are basically referring back to the monthly exchange rate that you would set in your CISPRO environment. Um, we have the ability to build bespoke and personalized workflows based on your uh, requirements. And really, really uh, hot topic here as well is we are doing our bit for the uh, lowering carbon footprint. Um, other areas of use um, for DocuA, so I know we're focusing in on uh, the accounts area of the business, but we uh, DocuA in our client base is used for job pack management, um, any documents, it doesn't actually matter what they are. Um, so anything that needs a workflow um, or an alert on it, say in legal for a contract renewal, um, can, DocuA can be used for that. HR and payroll are big use cases. Um, and ultimately, everything that goes in the system is compliant um, and adheres and helps with uh, auditing 
um, specifically in medical manufacture or supply, those kinds of areas. Um, and I know the big use cases in quality, quality areas. So am I working on a latest version? Can I have version control brought into my documentation? Can I ensure that the shop floor are working on the latest set of drawings, the most valid set of drawings? And can I have some approvals before um, the latest drawing is submitted out? So whatever it is, we can we can build in workflows because ultimately it's a piece of uh, it's a document or a piece of paper that uh, somebody needs to approve or, or decline. Um, and more laterally coming out, so there's a whole digital forms um, module within DocuWare, which is absolutely fantastic for supplier and customer onboarding and also employee management. Um, and over the last two years, electronic signatures, so we have the ability to embed DocuSign and validated ID, two products um, that are fantastic market leaders in electronic signatures, and those can also be embedded within your DocuWare process as well. I'm going to pass across to Jade at this point. Um, so I thought it was um, it would be interesting to hear from Jade, who uh, heads up the professional services side of the business, so she can talk you through what the life cycle of a project looks like from um, our initial contact all the way through to a go live. So, Jade, are you there? I am. Thank you very much, Anthony. No problem. Over to you. So, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining today. Um, and thank you for the introduction. So I'm Jade, I'm the operations manager at Anerta, and I'll be doing a quick talk through on, on how a project really looks at Anerta and, and how we like to handle our projects. So first things first, so that initial contact when when the kind of the, the sale first starts. So at that point, you, you, you're going through your sales process and then once you've decided that you want the product, um, you would then be handed over to me and I would do a scoping session with you. Now, the scoping sessions are really, really crucial to Inerta because we specialise in completely bespoke and unique solutions because we really, really like to focus in on what is best for that individual customer. Not all AP teams work the same. And if you look at different businesses, many AP teams have completely different processes. And so at Inerta, we try to, first things first, before we start a project, we try to get a really detailed and thorough understanding of how you currently operate as a business so that we can enhance, automate and improve on your current processes because we appreciate that a lot of AP teams don't want drastic change in the process. They just want extra efficiency. So we do the scoping session together. And then once we've done a scoping session where we can fully understand how you're working and, and how you envision working in the future, we'll then produce a scope of works. And the scope of works document is essentially um, quite a large document, but it will detail all of the functionality that we promise to deliver to you. So the scope of works, it's, it's not necessarily a document that, that I will give you and, and you have to sign. This is a document that we work together on. So if there's something missing or there's been a misunderstanding or you need a little bit of clarity on a certain area, um, it's something that we can work on together. And I'm happy to set up Teams meetings and go through those documents so that both parties are mutually happy with that scope of works before we get the signature ready for the project to really commence. So it's only at the point of sign off on the scope of works that we really call it a project at Anerta. So once we've got that project and the scope of work signed, it is you then pass over to me and my team and we'll issue you with a project timeline document. Again, this is something that we like to mutually agree with you. We always try to avoid month end when it comes to training and UAT because I, I, I would not want to put that on your AP team to not only have to handle month end, but also test a new system as well. So we're, we're very, very mindful when we're giving out dates for projects. So you get your project timeline document and within that, there's also some prerequisites. And I know that for a lot of projects, they can be quite daunting because there's so many prerequisites, so many things you need to get ready for, for everything to work. And, and that alone can be quite daunting for an accounts payable team because you're already busy enough. So the good thing about a project at Inerta is a lot of the prerequisites can be handled by me and your IT, and I am more than happy to liaise with third parties um, so that you guys can carry on cracking on so that we can get everything ready kind of behind the scenes. Um, 
So that's how we handle the prerequisites. We then do the project build. And as soon as the system has been built and is ready for you, uh, we'd then be at the point where we can start the user acceptance testing training. So the initial phase of UAT training, we actually deliver the training to a really small group of people within the business, kind of the key stakeholders. And the reason we do that is because we like users to be able to actually, you know, test the system and have a look at the system and use it because once they've got the system, they might then identify other kind of tweaks and changes and adjustments that they'd like. So we wait for those key stakeholders to sign off on the project before we actually deliver a wider scale user acceptance testing training to the wider business, just to kind of minimize disruption and make sure that everybody, all the key stakeholders are happy with the system before it is rolled out to the wider business. Um, and then once, once you've finished your user acceptance testing, um, we would then look to set you live. So we would basically, instead of pointing everything to your test CISPRO entity, we would redirect all of the invoices to be posted into your CISPRO live. And we would only do this with, with sign off from, from the customer um, after we've had every assurance that you're completely happy with the system. And then we'd agree a go live date and set you live. Now, at the point of Go Live, um, it doesn't stop there at Inerta. Um, although we are a DocuWare reseller, we still do have our own help desk at Inerta. Um, so we have a dedicated support team, um, which you can approach once you've gone live. And currently, I've actually, whilst um, we were uh, looking at that demo, I just had a look on one of my other screens. Our current average wait time for a first response on our help desk this week is 32 minutes. So I am very, very proud to say that our help desk is extremely speedy and efficient. And should you have any problems or any questions or anything you need help with, you can rely on the Inerta support team to, to get back to you in a very timely manner. So um, if I could just have the next slide. Fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to talk you through a case study. So. Anthony's shown you the demo and he's talked you through um, the kind of the overall product, security, uptime, workflows, and you've seen a few more details in, in the demo. But what can DocuWare and Verta really do Sorry, for an account payable team? So I'm going to focus in on Caterham Cars and talk through exactly how they use our product and, and the benefits that their AP team have told me really, really impacts them day to day and make a massive difference. So I've just got some bullet points that I'm going to elaborate on. So first things first, we've got math checks. So when a document is first stored into DocuWare and it goes off to Verta to be checked, it will do the math checks, which Peter showed you, where you will see the does the quantity times price per unit equal the total? Does the net plus the VAT equal the total? So we do all of these math checks to ensure that, you know, the suppliers enter the data correctly on the invoice. And that's all done automatic. So where you would usually have to manually come through and check that, you, you're relying on a computer to do that maths for you. Um, and it's pretty much instant. Uh, you've also got your three-way match. So when, whenever we reference three-way match, what we're referring to here is, does the invoice, the purchase order, and the goods received notice match? And we always ensure that we can find the purchase order and the goods received notice for an invoice, purely because you don't want to pay an invoice if you haven't received the goods. So we do a three-way match. Now we can do a two-way match if you've got sign-off invoices without purchase orders. We can work with that as well. But we always look for that GRN so that we, we know that, that you've definitely got the, the, the goods delivered. So we've also got PPV. So a purchase price variance. So what the system is doing when it's looking for PPV is it's looking at the invoice at a line level. So it's looking at every single line, each stock item listed on that invoice. And it's referencing the purchase order and checking, does the total match the purchase order at a line level to the invoice? And it will actually report back any differences to you at a line level. So you can go into DocuWare and you can see okay, this is £3 more 
than the purchase price variance. And one way that Caterham actually use the system is anything that matches perfectly. So we've got an invoice with a purchase order and a GRM that all matches perfectly. The quantities and values all match up. That will then be posted by the accounts payable team. However, the system automatically workflows any issues. So if there is any variance on a document, that then requires authorization. And you can send that purchase price variance to your authorizer and say, okay, this is this is coming, it's, it's slightly more, um, the invoice is slightly higher than the purchase order. Do you authorize this difference? And then and then it can be posted by the accounts payable team. We've also got um, a little bit I wanted to cover on GRNs. So one thing that wasn't mentioned in the demo is if we have an invoice matched to a goods received notice, it will actually go into CISPRO and close down that GRN for you automatically. So as long as that GRN has been fulfilled on the quantity, it can go in and close that down in CISPRO. Now, say you've got one GRN for um, 10 quantities and you get five invoices with two quantities over time it will chip away at that GRN and close it as soon as you hit that 10 on the value so it's again that's just another kind of uh, something automatic that happens in the background that can save you a lot of time um, I think this was covered on the demo but you've got um, multi purchase order general ledger code and good receive notices on an invoice. So if you've got an invoice and there's multiple general ledger codes applicable to the invoice, you can go in at a line level and you can allocate the general ledger code to the specific line on an invoice. The same with purchase order number and good receive notice. And then last kind of point on, on the functionality that I wanted to cover for Caterham. So Caterham really, really love this functionality because it saves their accounts team so much time. And when it was first discussed in scoping, honestly, faces lit up. So Smart Connect. So you can actually go into, Sys, into the SysPro interface screen and you can actually view an invoice in SysPro, the actual document, you can bring that up all through DocuWare, just through one single button. So you can go into SysPro, open up the supplier screen and you can find an invoice in there and you can literally press a button and it will actually pull up that document on your screen if you have access to it in DocuWare automatically. So it's a really, really quick way for you to be able to find um, documents um, from not only in DocuWare, but also in SysPro. And then the last point that I wanted to cover off was just your, your return on investment. Um, so this is something that all of our customers have, have kind of commented on because of the time and efficiency and the reliability of the product. The return on investment is massive because where staff in the past and we've had this um, <laughs> one client, we had users that were working overtime at month end to ensure that invoices were getting paid and they no longer have to do that and that, that comes at a massive saving to the business you've got your savings on printer costs and um, because a lot of our businesses that, that we support go, go completely paperless um, so there's, there's many different areas um, where you can see a return on your investment when you when you take out a product like DocuWare and Verta um, but that's everything from me I'll, I'll hand back over to Anthony and Darshni. Thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you, Jake. Very insightful. Thank you very much. It's a, um, a common theme that we get this kind of feedback. So um, I suppose I'm going to, uh, are we going cameras back on now? Um, back to you, Darshni. Lovely. Thank you very much, Anthony and Jay. We really did see the power of DocuWare today as a robust document management solution with the workflow. And of course, the digitalization benefits that we have from the automation engine that you and your team have built out. The customer journey that Jade covered highlighted how Anoda works closely with K3 CISPRO customers directly to deliver both DocuWare and Wordo. So it's fantastic. Too now we bad. do have to, we have a little bit of time for Q&A. And so if you want to pop your questions in the Q&A panel, if there's anything, we've got both Anthony and Jade here ready to answer your questions. The first question that I've got coming up here is what version of CISPRO will this work with? 
a good question. It doesn't it doesn't really matter because we're going in via the API and we're interacting with SysPro through the API. Um, it doesn't actually matter to us which version you're on. And actually, a common question is what happens when I go from let's say seven to eight, which is a very common theme at the moment for for K3. I know you're undertaking a lot of upgrades at the moment. It doesn't matter. There is no change for us. Um, there's no weak point. There's no anything configuration wise we need to do it all just works up so um yeah don't be concerned about that um it's all been covered off and that's why it's being done um at the very start that's why we built it up that way so that we didn't have to oh you're on a new version you're gonna have to pay as xyz to make it work again um so we're very clear about how we um we went about this with feedback from k3 as to how they want us to approach it as well so no, that's great, Anthony. And you're right, it is using the business object layer in the background. And so if you're licensed for business objects, it's something that's really nice and easy to do. And the benefit about SysPro's integration layer is the fact that you can upgrade relatively easily. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes. Um, I've got a question here as well coming through. Can this be a SaaS solution so I don't need to manage it? Hot topic at the moment. Very hot topic at the moment. So. Um, what you have seen um, in our demonstration there was actually Virto, Virto Suite was an on-premise. Um, so we'd have probably install that in the same area that you have Cisco currently. But we're seeing Cisco kind of going up to the cloud a lot more, either through Node4, who are your cloud suppliers, um, or and also I think uh, Cisco SaaS is going to be coming in the future. So we have reconfigured Virto Suite completely, and it's now um, a true SaaS product. So you've got DocuWare in the cloud, you've got Virto Suite in the cloud, and yeah, so that's what we've been, my development team have been busying themselves with for the last six months to um, refactor what we've developed and uh, make, making it available for the cloud. So yes, is, this, is the long-winded answer to that one. <laughs> More details, good. There's there's a follow-on question from the first question. What about older versions like Encore Impact 4.0? So we are going back into the depths of history with this particular one. We're going to struggle with Impact 4.0 because of the business object layer. It's it's only been introduced okay. with Cisco 6 going forward. So as much as I'd like to say any version, Anthony, I suspect we're going to have to step back a little bit on that one. But yeah, quite possibly. Before going, yes, it'll work, I won't, because I don't know enough about it. So um, there are there's a follow-up there. I, I would suggest probably first point of contact is go back to your account manager at uh, K3, and they can either introduce you, ask the question on your behalf, however you want to play it. We, we work very closely with all of the account managers at K3, have a, a great relationship. So if there are a specific question to you, um, fire it um, uh, on the next page. Actually, there's um, there's a slide that's got my contact details on it as well. So um, actually, it's not coming up for some reason. Um, anyway, go to your account manager. <laughs> I'll, while you're trying to flip over to the next, there is a question come up here. Is the product costed by the number of documents it processes, or standard software, or maintenance costing model? Many thanks. It, yeah, good, another good question. No, so there is no limit on the uh, usage of documents. Um, if you're talking about the intelligent indexing, it, it doesn't matter, as I said earlier, that whether you process a, a 500 invoices or 10,000 invoices a month, it, it really does not matter to uh, to document. There are there are no limits. Um, and in terms of storage, so the DocuWare Cloud comes with a 50 gig, I think, is the first tranche. Um, and actually, that might not seem a lot, but actually, that's a million invoices. So, um, it, you know, it, it comes with, with big scale as well, because um, each of the invoices compresses itself down once it turns into a PDF to about 56 kilobytes per, per image. Um, so, and you can obviously add storage, and storage is just so cheap these days um, in Azure. So, um, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. You can you can chuck as many documents, you can chuck WAV files, you can chuck CAD files, anything. It, it really has no limitations. Yeah, I've got a response back on that one. Thanks. That's perfect. Wonderful. Okay. 
I've got uh, one more question here, which is, it looks really simple. Can you show me a return on investment? We're having a drive on sustainability. So going paperless would be a massive interest to the business. Okay, so um, if you want to reach out to me, we have uh, an ROI tool that I can take you through so we can put in um, some of your staff costs, numbers of people in the team, number of approvers who are in the process, um, how, you know what your volume is, and it will actually, uh, we can put all the costs in for the solution as well, and it will demonstrate what the ROI is in year one, year two, and beyond. But it also um, processes out what the carbon offset savings are. So it, it actually pulls through, um, we've done a load of market research on this, so it pulls through how many trees, how much water, and what your carbon offset is as well. So if you want to explore that with me, my details are, are there, so you can approach me directly or you can go via your account manager. It's whatever whatever you, way you choose. I think if you come to me directly, copy in your account manager just for um, just for visibility, so that they know what's going on. Um, but yeah, I'm only only too, only too happy to take you through that. It's a web page, so it's a very quick session to go through it, um, and it drives out. I think the important thing is, and the reason it came about, was sometimes we don't present to the main board. Um, sometimes we'll present to maybe an AP manager who's undertaking the project uh, research, but they ultimately need to take that back up to a board for signature and approval. And, and sometimes these things are really important to help the case um, because it's important that boards are you know, trying to reduce our carbon and, and doing the right thing. And you're very right. We are doing our bit for the environment by, by taking paper out of a process. Um, a, an amazing stat came out from DocuWorld, which we've just come back from Berlin with DocuWorld, and it was an astronomical number, like pounds, that each bit of paper costs to produce. Um, and and it, it really fried my head as to how much money it is to produce that one bit of paper that we glibly just use. Um, it, it, it's absolutely crazy. So, um, yeah. And I think, more importantly, we're, we're turning... And without DocuAir and Verto Suite and all that kind of stuff, we're turning, generally, turning digital paper that comes in by email, we, we may print it out um, and then move it, circulate it around the business for an approval, and then we're probably going to scan it back in. And it's like, why Why is that a thing? Why can we not do things better? So, sorry, I'm waffling again. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. I am I'm I'm conscious of time, though. <laughs> so, I'm... Um, going to wrap up at that point. I want to say thank you to everyone and thank you in particular to Anthony and Jade for joining us today. It was really great to be able to hear. If we haven't gotten to your questions, we'll follow up after the fact as well, of course, and make sure that you're in touch with Anthony and Jade as we go on. But thanks again. Thank you so much for your time. Have a, have a great day and uh, keep well. Take care. Cheers. Thank all. you, everybody.